Here's the stomach lining, by the way. It's even worse. And these, these particular pictures, they're in my second book, Genetic Roulette. A friend of mine, who I didn't know at the time, Dr. Michelle Perro, was looking at these pictures, and an alarm went off and said, oh, my God, I now understand. She's a pediatrician, one of the top in the country, named as such for years. And in the early 2000s, there were all of a sudden a raft of very complicated new diseases that she wasn't seeing before. The same remedies were no longer working. She couldn't figure it out. Her colleagues were having the same issue. She looked at this and said, this is what's happening in the guts of the children. This was the fear of Dr. Arpad Pustai. So she put all of her children and families on organic diets, and things reversed. In fact, the film Secret Ingredients, which she is in, is about individuals and families who switch to organic, and autistic kids are no longer on the spectrum. Infertile couples have children. People with skin problems, cancer, allergies, uh, Brain fog, brain fog, <laughs> that was a joke. Um, <laughs> all sorts of diseases and, and conditions went away. And it wasn't just because we happened to pick these people who had something else going on, because it was repeated over and over again in her practice, in the practice of David Perlmutter, who's in the film, in others. So that's why that film is so impactful, because it's stories, emotional stories that make you cry and then you have the scientific evidence weaved in to explain why the GMOs and the Roundup were contributing to the autism, the paralysis, the tumors, the brain fog. And you understand the specific neurotransmitters that go out, the microbiome that gets attacked, the mitochondria. You understand that so you get permission to believe the stories that you're reading and watching. So that gives, them, that gives the, the mind the ability to say, yes, this is true, because now you understand it. And then you have the commitment. So I'm sharing this as part of the tactics and strategy that I've used for 24 years. And so now I'm going to give you some stories that you can share. Here's a story, genetically engineered bovine growth hormone. Remember that? Injected into a cows to increase milk supply. It's Santo, okay, Santo's here. It's still in some dairies, but most kicked out because of the massive education program. I talked to a former, I talked to a former, I talked to a former, I'm going to just find different spots on the thing. Now the person with the camera is really confused. Hello. I talked to a former Monsanto scientist, and he said that three of his colleagues were testing the milk from cows treated with the company's bovine growth hormone. And they found so much of a cancer-promoting hormone called IGF-1, the three Monsanto scientists refused to drink milk thereafter unless it was organic. One bought his own cow. Now, you see how much fun it is to tell that story? Say... See, Monsanto really doesn't want, you know. <laughs> Maybe you can bring me both, both microphones. Um, you see, if you could say that Monsanto's own scientists refused to drink milk after they tested it because of the cancer-promoting hormone they, fa they found, and one bought his own cow, that's interesting and that's memorable. But if you simply say, I wouldn't eat that, it causes cancer, or there's research that causes cancer, the response could be, oh, yeah, everything causes cancer. You see? So I'm, I'm helping you in whatever, whatever activism you do, create stories. Here's another story, okay? One of my favorites about bovine growth hormone. So they wanted to approve it at the FDA because the FDA was mandated to promote GMOs. So they were waiting for this one study that was done by Monsanto's friends, Monsanto's scientists and Monsanto's friends. And they injected cows not with Monsanto's bovine growth hormone, but another company's that never went on the market at 2% the dose that Monsanto uses. 
And they found that there was a, uh, I think, a 27% increase in bovine growth hormone in the milk. And they said, wasn't substantial. Now, it's a hormone, and any increase in a hormone is serious. But they said it wasn't substantial. But then they said, it really doesn't matter. Because 90%, this is what the FDA said, 90% of the hormone is destroyed during pasteurization. You can see it's found in that research study. So if you look at the research study, you realize that what they did is they pasteurized the milk 120 times longer than normal. But they only destroyed 19%, not 90, 1, 9, 19. So they added powdered hormone to the milk, 143 times the natural occurring level. Just poured it in, poured it in, poured it in. Then pasteurized it 120 times longer than normal. Under those conditions, they destroyed 90% of the hormone. And that's what the FDA reported. You can see how they rig their research. Now, when you realize that they're doing that, are you going to believe anything else that they say? No. So again, these stories are so important because they're what we needed to discredit Monsanto and to discredit the FDA. Someone wanted to discredit the FDA? Steve Drucker, are you in the audience here? Where are you, Steve? He'll be here tomorrow night in a panel with me. He pioneered a lawsuit which forced the FDA to turn over 44,000 secret internal memos. And the story that came out of that was the overwhelming consensus among the scientists working at the FDA were that GMOs were different and dangerous and needed to be tested, even human toxicological tests, because it could create allergens, toxins, new diseases, and nutritional problems. But the person in charge of policy at the FDA was Monsanto's former attorney, Michael Taylor. And when he wrote the policy, he systematically took out the concerns of the scientists. So one scientist said, what, this is just a political document. It has none of, the, none of the side effects that we talked about. And the final policy, which is still in effect today, says the agency is not aware of any information showing that the foods created by these new methods differ from other foods in any meaningful or uniform way. A total lie. How do we know? Because we have the FDA scientists saying the exact opposite. Saying it is, the it is the opinion of the technical experts in the agency that the process of genetic engineering and traditional breeding are different and lead to different risks. And by trying to force the conclusion that there's no difference is like forcing a square peg into a round hole, unquote. Completely lied in the policy. Denying, denying the concerns by the scientists. Pretending they didn't exist. And so, just hearing that, someone could say, oh, so they can't rely on the FDA. They can't rely on Monsanto. In 30 seconds, we've just discredited the two main spokespeople for the health dangers, for the health safety of GMOs. In story format. Oh, let's add the fact that Michael Taylor, after working at the FDA on Monsanto's behalf, and also approved bovine growth hormone, went to Monsanto to become their vice president. And then later, back to the FDA, become the U.S. food czar. So this, in one 30-second story, we've just removed the power of multi-millions of dollars of advertising. And people, oh, well, the FDA says it's safe. Well, the scientists didn't say it's safe. It was the political appointees. You can go more into those, that story if you want.